Stratford for the 141st Manchester Derby. It's the cup. We're interactive. Press your red button. The player cam is on a man who's played in five FA Cup finals already. Roy Keane. Here's Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Thanks, Ian. Playing his first FA Cup tie. with his new defender, Daniel Van Boyten. 1 metre 97 tall. He maybe can exploit the uncertainty of Manchester United's defending in the air. Five of the last six goals conceded by Manchester United have been to headers. Well, no premiership points for either side of Manchester on Wednesday. Not for the first time United have had problems with Middlesbrough. And his old uh, sidekick, Steve McLaren. Not for the first time Manchester City have lifted the hopes of their fans with a goal, only to let the opposition in for a winner a couple of minutes later. It's the nature of Manchester City. Important for Manchester United that Gary Neville's influence is back on display in their back line. It reads Gary Neville, O'Shea, Sylvestre, Fortune. And it's a problem caused one suspects, Andy, by the absence of Rio Ferdinand. I saw Ali Gouda Solskjaer there as well. He's not quite ready for a return, but not far away. Jeff Winter in his last season. has never done the FA Cup final, but if he doesn't get it this year, this is not a bad consolation. Manchester United, the most successful club in the history of the FA Cup. Ten wins, but since their last in 1999, they've not got beyond this round. They were knocked out in it, on this ground, by Arsenal a year ago. It always never ceases to amaze me how the difference in atmosphere in this ground when you play a cup tie as opposed to a league match. The 9,000 fans, of course, makes a huge difference. Well, the flag went up, and uh, Jeff Winter, for a second, tried to give Manchester City an advantage, stop the play, and uh, Sibieski, a lot said about offside, of course, over the last uh, ten days or so, from an incident on this ground. A goal by Ruud van Nistelrooy that... Uh, triggered off a debate about the interpretation of the law. It would be interesting to see if Manchester City gets some of their own Paul goals when he plays deep, when he drops off the play. They've got the extra man in central midfield, and it might just be that Claudia Arena is asked to keep a little eye on Scholes when they don't have the ball, Manchester City. 3-1 the league game here in December. It's only a couple of weeks or so until uh, the return. And Manchester United go to the city of Manchester Stadium for the first time. Well, it will be the first time, providing, of course, it's not a replay in this FA Cup confrontation. Arnie Arison, goalkeeper who came from nowhere into the uh, limelight at White Hart Lane, particularly in the second half. Here's Giggs. Plenty of recollections again in the local newspapers here about Ryan Giggs' his time as a, a schoolboy with Manchester City until he was 14 when Sir Alec Ferguson made a legendary visit to the Giggs household and the rest, as they say, is history. Fortune. This man just waiting. Here's Reina. It's a painful challenge on the American by Ruth Van Nistelrooy. Well, it wasn't a very good challenge at all. And had it not been the third minute of the match, we might well be seeing a yellow card, Ruth Van Nistelrooy. He's probably just get the benefit of the doubt from Jeff Winter because of the so early, but he comes in very late here. Strikers tackle, I suppose the best way to describe it. He's been watching Paul Scholes. <laughs> Here's Bart. 
Sean Wright Phillips was really the star, I think, in that recovery at Tottenham. Mm. They were a man light. He played as Sean Wright and Sean Phillips <laughs> to uh, make up that deficit, and the turnaround will never be forgotten. There'll be Tottenham uh, fans, maybe even Tottenham players watching today, thinking, why aren't we at Old Trafford? How did it slip away? Fowler slips the ball away to Barton. McManaman with Merseyside connection with that trio. And ball. They all got a little tight there, but they got a little bit of luck with the handball. I always think in a situation like this early in the game, no matter how far out you are, this is worth working the goalkeeper. Just a little bit further out when Tana lofted that ball onto Distan's head for the vital first goal at Tottenham in the fourth round replay. And he's taking a big enough run up, Tarna. Sibieski closer. Sibieski takes it, a deflection on it, and it will be a corner. Don't think it ever had the power to struggle a goalkeeper. So Tarnat to take it. So we find out attention to detail, set plays. City undoubtedly have worked on them this week. And Sylvester heads away from Manchester United. That's a, a better sign. Back by Reina. Sylvester goes again. Flag is up. As Fowler runs in behind Philip Neville. Of course, it's attention to detail for Manchester United as well. And defending is about detail and putting theory into practice. Concentration. Manchester yeah, United have lost that. Particularly set players. If you're losing goals from set players, Martin, and certain people are not doing the job 100%. And there were three at Goodison, which have done his old stomping ground. And of course, Janino was allowed to sneak in at the near post to head the second Middlesbrough goal. He also headed the first, but I don't think he put that down to a set play. Ball bounced back down off the crossbar. He could have put it in with pretty much any part of his body. Fortune. Well, Richard Dunn's almost been forced to play at right back. And we talked about the three centre backs being in play, and they are, but. I think the concern in getting Wright Phillips high up the pitch is forcing Richard Dunn, whether it's deliberate or not, to go and attach himself a little closer to Ryan Giggs. Just that, gets a foot hit. Here's Gary Neville. It's got a flip. And Gary to play it to John O'Shea. United don't get very far from that. McManaman. Reminded of his uh, Liverpool pass by a fairly tentative booing. Sobieski. Maybe just been seen by Kevin Keegan as more of a big game player. This is Gary Neville. Key. Ten Manchester derbies and no defeats. O'Shea. Sobieski, cutely done. In the legs of Phil Neville. Now a chance for Sean Wright Phillips to express himself against Quinton Fortune, who's really had to learn the left-back job this season. But there's someone who's played there before to help him out. In the shape of the versatile Phil Neville and this... A bit of space here for Keane. Giggs has come in from the left-hand side. Gary Neville's got Ronaldo outside him. He's looked for Van Nistelrooy instead. Still Van Nistelrooy. It's a bit of an international confrontation there. The Dutchman Van Nistelrooy, the Belgian Van Boyten. Van Boyten looking across to the linesman, who's very, very close to being offside. Fowler is offside. But he always plays in the shoulder with Van der Sarre. He takes a chance and getting caught offside time and time again. As he's loitering uh, in uh, 
in the old days would have been a straightforward offside position for Mr. Roy as this build up goes on. A little bit of difference in the license of the interpretation of the law now as to uh, when the ball is played. Does it get to Van Nistelrooy then? Scholes intervened. But the link up doesn't work out between Ronaldo and Scholes for Manchester United. a German defender, Fronsek, who was a significant figure the last time the clubs met in the FA Cup. It's on this ground eight years ago. Fronsek gave away a penalty from which Eric Cantona equalised and Manchester United went on to win. And Boyden is on loan from Marseille. And he was Marseille's top scorer last season. Mostly headers from set pieces. A little bit of uh, kicking the ball away from Gary Neville by Tarnat. He certainly can't be offside from a throw, that hasn't changed. And Van Nistelrooy looking to work that position. Hasn't quite settled. A couple of ten minutes, understandable. Not only a big FA Cup tie, but local derby as well, so... And the two players just settling on both sides. Maybe he would trade all the drama of a cup run in for some league victories. Well, Tarnat is definitely going to get uh, ticking off this time. Yeah, I mean, the ball's just bouncing and it has a little thrash, but doesn't really make much contact. What the knee is sufficient. for Philip Neville but he's worked it wide to Giggs and again Richard Dunn right across yeah they're as good as four at the back Manchester City at the moment Skulls Fortune's cross just uh, gets ahead to it it's possibly kind of pass through to Harrison but just uh, couldn't hear a call that wouldn't be surprising given the decibel count inside Old Trafford. Ronaldo. Well, it does make it look theatrical and difficult then for referees to be absolutely 100% sure that there was a leg thrown out there. There's a little bit of justice maybe there because uh, McManaman, who was penalised in the original decision, was allowed to make an interception. And he didn't seem to make much contact with Cristiano Ronaldo. And here's Reina, Sibierski, looking for foul. He's chased in behind Gary Neville. And bounces back off Robbie Fowler. Text of the fifth round of the FA Cup and the all Mancunian occasion. Neville, Keane. That's what Joey Barton does well. And he's just pulled that without looking. Well, that's the problem. Sean Wright Phillips was actually back looking after Ryan Giggs. And, uh, that's the uh, dilemma for Manchester City. Well, I think they've changed Manchester City. I don't think there's a doubt about that. I think the thing that's influenced them is where Paul Scholes on the ball now is playing and who's, who isn't playing up top with Ruud van Nistelrooy. You play three centre-backs in there, there's no point. It's one too many. Oh, it's a mistake by one of those three, Van Boyden. Ronaldo. 
for Gary Neville. Keane and Scholes. They were strong in the centre there, Manchester City. That's not always been the case this season. Keane really couldn't get to, too far out of the way. Didn't try to play pull back for a free kick for Barton. Cristiano Ronaldo, incidentally, is in the Portugal squad to face England next Wednesday. In memories of England-Portugal, Steve McManaman, Euro 2000. It was his goal that made it 2-0 after Scholes had got the first in a match that England lost 3-2. And the manager is on the Manchester City bench. Yeah. City man. Decent responsibility as well. Full back was left sprawling, filled in behind him pretty well, Steve McManaman. But neither, team, neither team's really clicked into gear in the attacking third yet. A quick corner from Giggs and uh, the team that have been conceding from corners come close to scoring from one with Ronaldo's header. That. I mean, I watched Ronaldo just walk in, stand at level with the near post, signal for the ball, and not get picked up. Extraordinary lack of marking there. He played very well in the fourth round, Ronaldo, but it mm. was Northampton Town. Last Premiership opposition, of course, in uh, round three for Manchester United. And they were a goal down at Villa Park. Right foot. Now Rayner. McManaman. Tana, Sibieski. A little touch might have uh, troubled Howard. Well, I wouldn't stand off Tarn, Michael Tarnat that easily. I think Ronaldo's got to get closer quicker. He's got a very, very good left foot. making a run, it's a long ball and Boynton's header drops only for Giggs deflects off Dunn contact by Wright Phillips, just to buy Manchester City a moment or two to regroup now, he's not really been penned back in the opening 15 minutes Manchester City haven't been particularly fast out of the traps here Claudio Reyna. It's a risky pass, though. McManaman. It's just all a little scrappy at the moment, the game. Michael Tarnat has uh, also a point to make to Manchester United. He was in the Bayern Munich side in that Champions League final. Going to Solskjaer, will he be pleased not to be uh, directly reminded of what Solskjaer did that night in Where Barcelona? Is he? is he on the left or right of that picture? <laughs> 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 yeah. And Mr. Roy stay in for gigs. Fortune's cross and Keane's header. It was a ball that was there to be attacked, hit with some pace by Quinton Fortune. Well, he's better than that as well, Roy Keane. Very, very accomplished in the air. And it certainly wouldn't have phased him, this ball coming in at that kind of pace. First time crosses on, it's just laid back pretty well. Not his best. One FA Cup goal for Manchester United, and it was ten years ago. Done. Interception by Fortune. Phil Neville, Sibieski uh, 
Working hard from the front. O'Shea. But I feel a bit sorry for Wes Brown. It's been out a long time. I expected to come in straight away and be uh, exactly as he was before all his injury difficulties. And it takes time, I'm afraid. Scots. Might take time for Manchester United here. Ronaldo. Diggs gets ahead to it. And Skulls Barton jumped with an arm up, might have made contact with the ball. Jeff Winter was well placed to see. Right, Phillips. And that's a credit behind Joey Barton. Not really engaged their front players particularly well, City, to this point, but no, they have to use the ball well. in favour with Kevin Keegan, having spent a spell on the sidelines. He has been a, a winner here before, Steve McManaman, with Real Madrid. Well, the two big boys are going up, even from the free kick as far out as this. Both centre-backs, not him, of course. We will be on player cam for the next... 15, 15 minutes or so. He's a credible target. The Belgian. Time that takes. But you can imagine that... Uh, well, certainly since the, the Liverpool game, Manchester City have been focusing on this tie and mm. focusing on the apparent Manchester United weaknesses that have... Uh, surfaced over the last three games, eight goals conceded. Fortune. Skulls. It's time it's Spartan that uh, makes Giggs turn and run into trouble. Shape of Reina. Getting it isn't a problem for Manchester City. Keeping it though, mm, it's a little harder at the moment. Harry Neville. Van to Roy. Roy Keane. Important stop by Harrison. Well, he did it second half against Tottenham and he started again. The Manchester City goalkeeper, but Roy Keane, I think, knows that that is a glorious chance. He looks to side foot this one. And I thought he'd just put his foot through it and drill it with some power. He's so close to the goalkeeper. It's a good save, but United should be leading. Ronaldo. Well spotted by Van Boyton. McManaman. First real chance of the game. Might let it uh, trouble his mind. Well, this uh, plan and platform put out by Kevin Keegan, it asks a lot of uh, Rayner McManaman. We know about Barton, he'll get his tackles in and work in the centre midfield, but he, he needs those allies either side of him, and they've run in behind uh, McManaman there. Gary Neville it was. I think one area there is a weakness, could be a weakness, is in the left-hand side. Michael Tarnock doesn't really have anyone in front of him. Any real support. Manchester United can switch it to Ronaldo quickly. He might get a bit of joy, 1v1 against Tarnock. He's taking a, a chance there. Van Boyten. There's a little cameo of what this rivalry is all about. It's a free kick to Manchester United at the end of it. Well, he just dwelt on it, Van Boyten. Took a chance. Tested his own ability to play his way out of trouble. And almost paid for it, but a free kick has been given. 
just past the halfway mark in the first half. Ronaldo's only Manchester United goal came from a, a free kicker, a little bit wider against Portsmouth. Found its way in. We've got a better angle for a, a direct approach from here. And there he goes. Good effort. You can tell the goalkeeper's worried, he's scrambling across goal. That is very, very close. Good whip, good pace, and almost perfect direction. Nearly got back. Well, Harrison understandably had an eye on the other post. It's goals. Just up to the little Manchester United in the last five minutes or so. Van Boyden. City, City haven't been allowed to start, have they? They haven't used the ball well, they've given it away too easily. O'Shea. See where they want to start their attacks from primarily. But Sean Wright Phillips has actually come infield. Now he's spun away. It was a bit late for Joey Barton, who had to go through the middle in the end unproductively. Manchester City prepared to just keep their shape. Make it difficult for Keane and company to find a pass. And Jeff Winters given City a free kick. A little unlucky there, both the challenge of Van Boyten and Gary Neville's pretty similar. Not a lot between them, but for he thought Gary Neville overstepped it a little. The problem for City really has been turning talented players into a tough competitive outfit. They showed an edge at Leicester, of course they did at Tottenham. Now those only successes since November the 1st. I think he can be over happy with the way his team has started, Kevin Keegan. Done. Outrun by Ryan Diggs, Scholes pulls away. That was a good race, wasn't it? We know Richard Dunn's quick. We know Ryan Giggs is quick, but Giggs was a little quicker. Ronaldo, who we know has a very deft touch, pulled the ball in very easily. Keane. Scholes wants it to feet. Keane couldn't see the path to it. Phil Neville to Ronaldo. Wants to tease Tarnat again. Back for Gary Neville. Ryan Giggs back post and uh, well tracked by Sean Wright Phillips. Well, that's a danger with Tarnat because you look here at this stand, because there's no protection, Mark, one of the full and one of the centre backs is dragged out. So it does leave a gap at that back post because Richard Dunn has to come in to mark people. Team going near post. Sylvester gets a touch van Lister Roy, Ronaldo. Corner off McManaman. moment and not surprisingly Manchester United the dominant force Sibieski helping out and we're never looking for Roy Keane he raised himself onto the ball at the expense of Dista no, he's not lucky he, get, he gets a position, stands his ground here. Just that misjudges that totally. It's pretty emphatic possession. But City have done all right protecting the goalkeeper. 
can only think of one save he's had to make, the one from Roy Keane. And we're almost half an hour into this game. So Kevin Keegan will be fairly happy with that aspect of his game, his team's game, but he will be very disappointed the way they've used the ball. And how little they've actually been in this half of the pitch. Fortune. Roy Keane went forward. And Gary Neville again on the gallop and onside. Richard Dunn has to kept his nerve. I think Joey Barton just switches off here. He tracks Gary Neville so far and just stands. And this stand gets caught. Ball watching infield as well. It's a lovely ball in, but just lack of support. Brighton standing in the middle, playing them onside, playing Gary Neville onside in particular. A collection of corners for Manchester United. Get out, get out. And Mike Phillips with a chance to run. Fortune charging back at it. And Mike Phillips does well to keep it for City. It's been a problem for them so far in the game. And McManaman only keeps it in for Ronaldo. And suddenly Manchester United turn and threaten and have another corner that's just an awful ball that got them in problems Steve McManaman probably would have been better letting it go out of play but they're not doing themselves any favour City for the use of the ball towards Giggs at the near post Sure that was the plan, that's where it ended up from Ronaldo. He's on the ball again. And Robbie Fowler having to come back and try and help uh, stem the flow. Keane turns. Rainer there, McManaman there. Oh, that's a better passing. McManaman and Fowler on the same wavelength. Rayner has covered a lot of ground to back up the attack. Under challenge, felt he was fouled. Jeff Winter thought not. Rayner. Half an hour gone. Fruitful in terms of possession for Manchester United, but not in terms of taking the lead. Through for Fowler, Sibieski likewise with the header. That's where they've struggled in that area last time. As soon as they've got anywhere near that Manchester City, they've been giving it away. They haven't looked like they could find a way through. Haven't looked threatening, really. And they are without an Alka, well, of course. That's a that's huge thing. Mentioned that. 19 goals this season. I guess it would be a bit like Manchester United being without Ruud van Nistelrooy. games because he's got the three match band coming to that red card at Arsenal Tarnett lovely ball mm. good technique and it's given Mike Phillips a chance to take on fortune but Sylvester across actually made it easy for him in the end but it had been more challenging he was in the right place key and Mr. Roy might have used the upper arm. He's played it as though he expected the whistle to go, but he obviously expected some movement from a teammate that wasn't there. I don't know what he thought. Attack. 
Scott's goal's going in. Well, they've been playing well enough to earn a goal, and now they've got it. Well, it's been coming, hasn't it? Maybe not with chances, but the pressure's been building and building, and yet again, you talked about them. Two goals in the league match. Look at that little turn round the corner from Keane, and he's been, I think, fantastic for Manchester United. But reina has got a problem. Look, he wants to win it, but he almost pulls his foot away from it. Now, whether he does that because he's worried about the own goal, or whether he thinks the goalkeeper's going to get it, you can see the leg came out, went back again. Uh, no surprise behind them that Paul's goals calmly, coolly, and effectively gives his side the lead. It's a local lad in the local derby. And it was a head of steam being built up by Manchester United. And it's now not just hot air. It's substantial. They lead Manchester City by one goal to nil. I mean, it might sound daft, I know, but I think that might be the best thing that could happen to City because they really have been poor as an attacking force in this first 35 minutes. And it's needed something to shake them out of that. The goal against is, is that. And I think at half time, if it stays like this or worse, that's just getting booked out for four or five offences. You saw Jeff Winter indicate there. But I think Kevin Keegan have plenty to say to his team, as he probably did at Tottenham. He knows what to do and what to say, but they haven't been a patch in the first half and they were that night. Phil Neville. And Van Nistelrooy is onside. And that pace that you talked about, Andy, that Richard Dunn certainly has, particularly for a big man. But, he did it all. But again, look at the sloppy play there from Manchester City at the back. They have the ball, possession of it. One pass is given it away, and he's almost through the middle of their defence. Van Nistelrooy skulls. This thing just got to it. Phillips looking for a bit of help, he gets it on the outside from Sibieski. Well, Manchester City better batten down the hatches a bit at the moment because Manchester United are looking to put this game beyond them as quickly as possible. Yet. 
It's a major, major disciplinary issue here in the FA Cup. Kevin Keegan goes down to get his players out of it. First of all, well, he's shown a yellow and then a red for Gary Neville. It wasn't straight red. The yellow for diving, I think, and the red for using the head, but that could have been a red in itself. Manchester United are down to ten men, and a player brought back, apparently for his composure for their defending, has lost the plot at a time when United were looking comfortably moving towards winning this cup tie. Well, it might not be finished. This is where book. This is it. He really does dive there. There's no doubt that. And he incensed Manchester City player Tarn that got involved, McManaman got involved, Joy Barton got involved, and there's a little nudge there. Saw it quite clearly, so did Jeff Winter. He has no option but to send Gary Neville off. He's now having a chat with the fourth official. There was all sorts going on, I'm sure, that the referee didn't see. Now, Tarnett has been booked. He, so has he been gets booked, another yes. yellow in the episode here. Joey Barton Gary was Barton. involved as well. Now, I don't know what's happening with him. Now, this is the player who got two yellow cards, of course, in the fourth round replay. Surely Barton's not going to go again. Well, from what we saw, from what we've just seen again in the replay, it was a little push in the chest. He gets yellow. Yeah, I thought that. Tom, that's the one that you'd be worried about for Manchester City because he definitely got involved in it. Yes, uh, being cynical, you'd say, well, book Joey Barton and... Uh... <laughs> We'll take that caution as a team and get on with it, because we're playing against ten men. Yeah, yeah. You can't argue with that, can you? I think what you can do is uh, take issue with Jeff Winter saying that they, the second one was yellow. But I don't know, maybe the, the red will be a straight red and the yellow, at, you know, if you like, three, three, three punishments. I think it will be. I think it was a straight red. I think yeah. he, he more than likely booked him for the dive. He was allowing play to go, Jeff Winter, and probably would have gone back and booked Gary Neville after the play came to a halt. It didn't, of course, naturally come to a halt, so he booked him for the dive, and then I'm convinced it was a straight red, but I guess Jeff Freeze will be able to clear that up at half-time. Well, now the drama will unfold. Of course, uh, this time, it's Manchester City. Stars as ten men themselves, of course, at Tottenham, yep. they have the supposed advantage. Well, a game that was just hardly what you would call a local derby. Sibieski. Well, a, a little slow in getting organised Manchester United here. A decent ball in, but it's just a bit far out for Sibieski. They've had to reshuffle. Phil Neville has got the right back. That's no problem for him there. And they just tuck Paul Scholes back in, leave Van Nistelrooy, I guess, up top on his own, the support coming from midfield. But they want to get to half-time now, Sir Alex Ferguson, just so he can set things down, set all these players down. Because there wasn't a threat, they were absolutely dominant in this game. I know it's only 1-0, but they were never in any problems Sir Alex Ferguson's side. He must have thought, this is as comfortable a 1-0 as I can remember in a local derby. And then, well, losing the head... Gary Neville, first with his dive, which... Last player sent off in uh, Manchester Derby was Roy Keane. Three years ago, on this ground as well. Across goes Sylvester. Gary Neville, we're told, only passed the fitness test this morning. He must be regretting that he did pass the fitness test now. We're seeing him uh, sent off in a game at Tottenham a few years ago now. I think that's his only previous dismissal from Manchester United senior team. Ronaldo. Fifth round action tomorrow, 3 p.m. Liverpool against Portsmouth, Sky Sports 1. Steve McManaman in the 
the centre of it all today. We'll remember a semi-final in 92. He became the man of the match in the final. And Liverpool having accounted for Portsmouth and accounted for Sunderland. Twelve years ago. Here is McManaman. Here's Fowler, he's behind Phil Neville, Robbie Fowler, it's an ever-widening angle. That was the only thing, yeah, made it difficult for himself, he should have flashed it across goal, Reina had just arrived, right on cue, in the six-yard box. First sign of how Manchester United might be rattled here. Oh, it's Reina to hit, poured away. Too high, even for the big Van Boyten. Came a little slower, I think, than Tim Howard anticipated. I think they got a deflection, that's what affected the path of the ball. The guns wasted the crossing charts. Giggs. He won't get it himself. Scholes. Two added minutes before half time. Well, Kevin Keegan's got a, a talk at half time as well, really. Again. Because he, <laughs> he really has to calm his players down. He must be saying, you know, because it does happen in football, and he'll be thinking, this, the referee might just even it up, lad. So whatever you do, don't give him a reason to send one of you off. And that's got to be really a big part of his team talk at half time. Keep 11 players on at all costs, he will be saying. Well, that might yet be happy birthday for Kevin. 53 today. Versatility of Philip Neville. Great use to Manchester United after the sheer stupidity of his big brother. This is Giggs. This is the team with ten men. And in goes Ronaldo. It's offside. Looked off. Don't think there's a doubt. Does it never gets back out? I mean, he ain't just off. He's a country mile off. quite happy working the front line on his own. It's just a case of what support Manchester United uh, can get to him. That will be discussed at half-time. Jeff Winter has sent off Gary Neville after Manchester United were moving smoothly to what would be uh, a normal performance against Manchester City. Paul Scholes marking his 400th Manchester United game with a goal. Roy Keane Discussing the dismissal, I'm sure, with Jeff Winter as the players go off. Manchester City, a goal down, but a man to the good at half time. Tasty. David James and Gordon McQueen are looking forward to talking about that first half. United lead 1 0, but the story United down to 10 men. Neville off, game on. 1-0 up, might have been 2-0 up, looked as if they were going to win the game and win comfortably, and the whole Gary Neville thing's turned the game in its head. Player Cam, press your red button to go interactive, is with an unpopular player around these parts, a man I suspect with a bit of a bruise, Steve McManaman. Here's Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Well, here come Manchester City again, out for a second half. 
in an FA Cup match, trailing, this time by just one. But now, how will they cope with the psychology of having an extra player? They cope brilliantly for Kevin Keegan, a man down at White Hart Lane. There's a, a lot of this in the mind, Andy, isn't there, because of uh, the past history here as well. And I'm just looking at Sir Alex Ferguson walking along a touchline, man. He came out and he immediately was punching the air to the fans around behind the goal and the side there, getting them going, because I think he knows he looks angry, he looks annoyed, the Manchester United manager, and he wants the fans to play their part. Well, this has happened... Uh, at the end of a, an erratic spell by Manchester United. Their premiership performances haven't been to the manager's liking. And now they'll need plenty of FA Cup steel here, even in their own backyard. But it is a real opportunity for Manchester City who sees the initiative well, that, uh, there's no flag by the assistant that Ronaldo had taken the ball out cleared by Van Barton. certainly a job one for Ronaldo and Giggs particularly for Manchester United when they have the ball two players were capable of doing what Ronaldo did then and taking the ball lots of yards up the pitch giving his teammates a little breather should they need it of course but this Manchester United team are good enough to cope with losing a man and keep the ball like they're doing now. Dista. Sibieski had a good look round to see what had happened and to see whether the referee was going to help him, but he wasn't. And boy. Fowler, letting it run for Sibierski. Sean Wright Phillips looking for support in the centre. It's a little bit late arriving, but it is arriving. He's only picked out the head of O'Shea. Done. Sibierski. Had enough time, but not a convincing attempt from Sibierski. Never looked at it as most comfortable here on his left side. Never threatening the goal, really. It was a lovely break, though, initially. That's what they'll be looking to do, spring Sean Wright Phillips wide on the right here. Just not so sure they'll get as much width on the left. And I think when you have the extra man, I think you have to make the pitch as wide as possible. O'Shea. Oh, and they could put McManaman wide on that left-hand mm. side. I think he's reluctant to go so that he's reluctant to do it. He's reluctant to stay there, Steve McManaman. I think he's reluctant to go too near the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's fair to say that the uh, the Republicans in the Manchester City ranks sent Gary Neville on his way with their best wishes. <laughs> Turn by fortune. McManaman definitely central at the moment. Sibierski is tucking it forward from Neville. Like the uh, good cricketer that he once was, reading the spin well. A bit of uh, rain in the air. King. Good chase by Ronaldo. And good covering by McManaman. Turn that again, cut upfield. Big gap in behind. He was quick to see it. Manchester United with a corner. They've lost only one of the last 19 matches against Manchester City. It was relatively recently. Last season, the last derby at Main Road. Jigs. Sylvester trying to get their ton up, beat him to it. Phil Neville, then Sylvester. Offside, Van Nistelrooy. 
maybe Ronaldo as well. Cut out well. It's a pretty good line coming out. The ball didn't go that far. But look how quick they are out. No doubt about decision. Sibieski. Barton has made it to the second half in this FA Cup tie. Well, there was a, a little bit of doubt about that. And he uh, got involved in the Gary Neville episode. Fowler. McManaman. Tarnat to the left. Back into Barton again. Rayner. Dunn. Sibieski, Barton, Fowler fighting for it, back with Sibieski again, McManaman. Dunn's first time cross is a waste of uh, the patience of the approach work. And it'll be something like that that City are looking to do, keep possession, work Manchester United across the pitch. The one thing they have to get is better quality than Richard Dunn provided them with there. Fista, Sibieski. into the back of Fowler by Sylvester. Manchester City have still got the ball. Tarnat. Sibieski. And it's Sean Wright Phillips who scored here in the Premiership, but doesn't score here in the FA Cup. Lovely football. If he picks this ball out, it's a super ball to Sibieski, but... I don't know if that was meant either, whether he was looking for Rainer's run. But he gave the goalkeeper a chance, it was a good height, and pretty much straight at him. Richard done by the near post. And unmarked here, Claudio Rainer. But, uh, they got it wrong. And out comes Roy Keane. Here's Ronaldo. be a goal kick. Seconds earlier, Sean Wright Phillips could have been celebrating another Old Trafford goal in his career. He took his time, let the ball go across on his strong side, but you see what I mean about being a good height? Pretty much straight at Tim Howard. I would expect him to save that. Sibieski. Just a, a place in the quarter-final at stake here. The round, incidentally, in Manchester United haven't reached since they last won the FA Cup in 1999. Of course, all the local bragging rights as well. And just imagine how, uh, if Manchester United were to win in these circumstances, how painful it would be for City followers. McManaman. Duck. Heel, right Phillips, he's got the ball, had to, in his own penalty area. Barton. Oh, and look at, and look at a little bit of joy, you know, down this right-hand side with Sean Wright Phillips and Richard Dunn. Settled in for possession, Manchester City. They've made one good chance. He's a nervous time for Manchester United. Ronaldo showing that he can defend and do it in a composed manner. But again, it's possession, wasted, squandered. No real craft or thought in that ball from Joey Barton when he played it. Goals. Definitely the midfield man now. Phil Neville. And he got a bad run of the ball there. Trying 
Martin has cut it back to Keane. Sent up at the moment of contact. McManaman. Silvestre. Barton had one eye on him. Free kick given against Fortune. The only thing I thought so Alec might think about at half time was I wondered about Nicky Buck. You know, somebody who's been around the block, he knows what's required, particularly in this match and in the cup tie, you know, it is. And I wondered about Ronaldo. I mean, if you took him off, Martin, and said, OK, just play the four players, you know what it's all about in that midfield. You don't really need any great width on the right because City don't have much width on their own left. So I thought he might have thought about that. Reyna. Mike Phillips heads on. Comes to Sibieski. But this is what Ronaldo does give them, a chance yeah. to get out. Yeah. And I'm sure later on, if it stays 1-0, that might well happen. A shorter period to defend. The risk, of course, a change now, and uh, mm. with Nicky Butt on, they didn't concede a goal. And he waits and wonders, as does Diego Forlan. Where's Brown? Roy Carroll? I just worried and wondered about that chance from Sibieski, as it was dropping I'm thinking, let it drop, and volley it, hit it but he opted to take it early with a header, but never really troubled anyone Full kick not taken from the right place Jeff Winter was having a word with McManaman Terry <laughs> <laughs> Barton playing it back and uh, being sporting in doing that and that's hit the referee I saw the funny side of it. I remember they got hammered with one at Anfield, I think, one night you were there, didn't you? Mm. Jeff went on. Or was he just hammered <laughs> by you? <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> he definitely got hammered with the ball. Van Nesteroy. It's good play by the front man for Manchester United. Ronaldo. Goals. Oh, super wing play from Roy Keane. It's that type of talent and attitude, especially attitude and adversity, that means so much to Manchester United. In a strange way, he'll be reveling in this. What a win it would be. Exactly tight on John O'Shea and Sylvester. Right Phillips. Fowler. Can wait for support. He's got McManaman really urging himself forward on the outside. There. Rain has got into the middle. Back towards Fowler's feet again. Doesn't get there. Yeah. Deflection that uh, helps City. A better cross. Sibieski. Oh, what a oh, save! What a save from Barton by Howard. Well, as the last one, I thought he should have saved. He's maybe got no right to save this one. That's a fantastic effort from Barton at the back post. It's got goal written all over it. What a magnificent save! Turn up with the corner. This start. He's brushed his eyebrows. McManaman. Right, Phillips. Flag was up. I <laughs> didn't realise. But it was a magnificent stop. Well, they're getting plenty of players forward, Manchester City. And this is a great effort. Controlled the volley. I mean, from that distance, it's a pure instinct from the goalkeeper. But what a strong right arm it is here to get it up and away. Fabulous stuff. It was a very good header by Antoine Sibieski to give Barton the chance. Blue Moon is being booed. That's the City anthem being drowned out at Old Trafford. 
that can the Manchester City fire be put out by the ten men of Manchester United. We've seen some acts of heroism already. Van Nistelrooy. And Giggs charging through. Dunn sees him off. He wants a corner. Not so sure it was, but it was a lovely break. And this is what City have to guard against. Good play from Van Nistelrooy, good vision. And great support play from Ryan Giggs. Looks a goal kick. I just wonder if it skips up next for Richard Dunn. It doesn't. It's definitely a goal kick. <laughs> Manchester City have played well. Where they were so poor with their use of the ball first half, they've been much, much better. I know they have the extra man, but it isn't always the case that you can play better. They have done, they've used it better, they've worked the ball across the pitch better, and they've created chances. There's a testing half hour coming up for Manchester United. Lovely play between Giggs and Keane. They're keeping their cool, experienced players from the day when Gary Neville played more than the 400 games that Paul Scholes has reached today. And he lost his head and used his head in the same uh, moment. O'Shea, half an hour to go. Never been a replay in the FA Cup between Manchester United and Manchester City. Scholes from Nistelrooy pulling away from Dista. <laughs> Jeff Winter spreads his arms, waves away the penalty shouts. Yeah, I think he was just strong by Mount. There's no real plea from anyone else. I watched Ryan Gig right beside the referee, not interested. I always think players' reactions are good to watch. Van Nistelrooy doesn't seem to have a problem with it. Sibieski, Fowler, it's McManaman! Manchester United were cut apart there. Sibieski going in, well watched by Silvestre. Well, if Carl them wide open, absolutely wide open, with a little one-touch football in. Well, that was tentative, a tentative prod from Steve McManaman. Well, it was more a miss than a save. No. Done. Rayner. Sobieski out tackling key. Done. Sweeps it in again. Tarnat will hit Robbie Fowler. This is a shame for City. Well, let's go back first of all to Jeff Winters. Uh, penalty uh, assessment here. Well, he's got a really good view of this, but you see what I mean about Van Bout. There's, there's a tackle there, and there's, both players are going over. It's not a penalty, in my opinion. The referee gets that absolutely right. But you can see where the referee is. He sees the ball. There's a the tackle. He sees that. He's not interested. I think he's right. Well, that could well have been seen as a push by Dissa. Again, uh, Van Nistelrooy not complaining. And now, uh, at least it's consistency from Jeff Winter because uh, he could have called that one in favour of Wright Phillips and didn't. He's going to give that one against Roy Keane. Terry Barton, who uh, looks up to Keane and would love to become half the player that Roy Keane has been. And has uh, all the attributes to do just that, and maybe more. Free kick to Manchester City. Michael Town had to take it. Fowler, Keane was behind it. Distant. McManaman. Fowler. Still plenty of time left, but will Manchester City rue this from Steve McManaman? Well, I just thought he could have done anything here, Martin, except that. You could see that. It's not a convincing 
finish this, is it? You know, it's a dropping ball, to yeah, be fair. No, but a players of this quality, you, you know, it's not a difficult volley. They really put your foot through that. It was a little tentative side foot prod. Do you remember that goal he got for England against Portugal in Euro 2000? That was a volley, and he, he whipped it in. He'd love to have had the same sort of contact here. I'm sure you'll see it again in the build-up to uh, England's trip to Portugal on uh, Wednesday. No England Scottish yet, but I'd be surprised if Steve McManaman was in it. No. <laughs> So with Steve McManaman. <laughs> but talking of Portugal, and as we mentioned in the first half, he is uh, looking to add to his two senior caps already. Still only 19, only just 19, in fact. And you can follow him if you're a Sky Digital viewer via the red button on your remote. Well, it's certainly getting worked. I mean, the defence has been getting a bit of criticism in the last couple of games. And at the moment, with the help of some Pretty good goalkeeping. And managing to keep a clean sheet. Kicks. Scorer in a pole of the greatest ever FA Cup goal. Yeah. Can't remember that. At the expense of Arsenal, if you're wondering. I'm sure you're not. <laughs> trouble for Tarnat. And maybe trouble for Manchester City. Ronaldo. It's a corner they've got to deal with. No, they've got to be careful, it's good closing down, but Tarnock gave him a chance, he had ample opportunity to clear that, and he didn't. That might not have been a corner either. Keane. Back with Ronaldo again. And with the dancing shoes. Eventually, that's his team out of the harm that he put them into. Well, you look at what Kevin might do, Kevin Keegan, that is, and what has he had in avenge? He's obviously got Jonathan Mack in there. That would be an obvious choice if you're looking for a little bit of support, somebody who might get you a goal. Kevin saying he was unlucky, Mack, and he'd be left out. Well, he got them the goal in the replay win at Leicester, and of course he got them the winning goal at White Hart Lane. Mm -hmm. Fortune didn't have to try and get out of the way, and he certainly didn't try to get out of the way when he's on all fours. Mark Phillips couldn't hurdle him. This time, Manaman, a fetcher and carrier here. It's the role that he ended up playing at Real Madrid. Well, they can get the ball to this position at will. But it's bad, that bad, sort of bad, thing. Bad done. You know, they can get the ball there, Manchester City, time and time again. 25, 30 yards from goal. And to be fair to them, they have created one or two excellent opportunities. Ronaldo has played his part in the work ethic that they've needed with ten men. Keane and calling in the build-up to this game for more of what is needed to be a Manchester United player. He's well found by Fortune. Giggs. Good voice, particularly since they went down to ten men, Manchester United, but we know time is ticking away. We're into the last quarter now. Reina, Sobieski. Bart. McManaman. Back for Joey Barton again. Yeah. 
again. They get it there. 30 yards from goal, and it's choices then. Best players get the choices right more often than not. That's what Manchester City have to do. Plenty of attempts, can't argue with that. Most of those, the majority, vast majority, second half attempts as well. And they've worked the goalkeeper. This time. That's a straight header for McManaman. Giggs. Can Nistel Roy. And this down. Handball shouts. Peels for goal kick. <laughs> I think he just tries to play it in. It might have at some time or other hit the arm. Dead off his foot, but penalty. Poor thing. Shea makes the first run and is unmarked. Mr. Roy gets a boot to it, and Boynton gets ahead to it. And then O'Shea can steer it wide to Cristiano Ronaldo. And Mr. Roy, the ten men have made it 2-0. Never write off Manchester United. Robbie Fowler and Cole are thinking free kick here, but not from that mark. Just watch as the ball goes outside the box and Roy Keane and Fowler go for it. Bounces up, the foot comes up. Robbie Fowler immediately looks around thinking it's a free kick, doesn't get it. But what a ball this is again. And City just don't deal with it. He did it late on against Everton, Cristiano Ronaldo. And he found his mate at the back post for a winning goal late on. Might not be the winning goal, but it, it gives Manchester United a bit of relief. Goal poacher supreme. Johnny on the spot. Sir Alex Ferguson a lot more comfortable now. And even though it was close in, it took a bit of finishing because yeah. the ball bounced up. Giggs it was had gone near post. And they might well have been celebrating his goal if he'd made real contact. But round the back, Rude van Nistelrooy. Well, now Manchester City have to find the sort of uh, heroism that they had in the second half at White Hart Lane. And McManaman's miss, or miss hit, shall we say, has come into even sharper significance. And the save from Howard from Barton's volley. Sibieski. What it does show you is if you put the ball into the right area from wide, it is at times almost impossible if you're a defender to deal with it. So Alex Ferguson will uh, celebrate a 50th win as a manager in the FA Cup if Manchester United gets success today against the club that he got his first win against. Back in 1987, and what was a third round tie? Fortune. Pass Sibieski. Almost dismissed him with disdain. Oh, what a save by Harrison. But in goes Ronaldo. It's three. Giggs with the shot. Harrison with the save. Ronaldo with the goal. And Manchester United, a man light. And now running riot. Great ball again. And all the damage is done wide again from Manchester United. Three goals from three balls into the box. Lovely play. Skips past Tobieski far too easily here. No, it's a token gesture, but the goalkeeper doesn't get any luck. It's a quite stunning save. You talk about a good hand to get it up and away. He didn't really have it there, he stops it, but can only just help it into the air. And Ronaldo pretty much seals this game. Right there and then. Well, he made the second, the significant goal. He scored the third. As you see, only his second Manchester United goal in his first season here. I bet they're glad they kept him on, Andy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> McManaman. And what will this do to Manchester City? Fowler. 
I suppose Tottenham fans will be thinking, well, it might revive them. But uh, it's looking like more Old Trafford misery. And Ronaldo has them dancing to his tune again. Yeah, a show more time. Certainly for 20 minutes in this half, it was anything but for Manchester United. They were pinned back for decent spells and had to hang on in many ways to that 1-0 lead. But there is a difference in the quality at the moment at the top end of the pitch. And I think that's been shown today. Depleted, but certainly not diffused. to Dunn. McManaman flag up against Fowler. Well, City's big mistake in the match is not getting a goal when Kevin Keegan said we're on top. An excellent 20 minutes at the beginning of this second half. Three or four excellent chances. That man made a couple of very big saves and a couple of less than convincing attempts from a couple of City players and they didn't get the goal and then Ronaldo's cross and then his goal have pretty much sealed the game well it's gloom plus for Manchester City the scenario is set out for them in the second half to take advantage of Gary Neville's momentary madness to take advantage of an extra man to lay some old Trafford ghosts. And it looks like, but well, it's almost certainly old Trafford agony again. Rayner, McManaman, Barton. No flag against Fowler this time. Turn that looking for a longer throw. Tarat! They've got one back! Surely not, Andy, surely not. Do you believe in miracles? In the FA Cup, I believe in miracles. <laughs> Manchester City must believe in miracles here. Well, this is where Ronaldo switches off. Look at the back post. He just has no interest in defending it. He just watches the ball. He allows Tarmat to just almost walk in behind him. And he's got too good a left foot, the German, not to take this chance. See, that was convincing. That was meant, unlike McManaman's earlier, when I thought it was, well, again, a tentative one. Well, into supreme adversity. Manchester City again finds some strength. But Ronaldo, oh, it's a good tackle. And Van Boyten. And a good interception by John O'Shea. Giggs played onside by Dunn. It's three against one. It's not quite that now. Well, we're going to see some extraordinary shapes, I think, to counter attacks because Manchester City have simply got to go for it. They were short of numbers at the back then. And the least regroup has turned out. Got to be very careful. He was cautioned early in the game. It was, and what you don't want to see, it's easy to say, but players around the referee there telling him exactly that, trying to influence Jeff Winter. But that's the nature of the game we're watching. Well, vis a the offside low. Rude van Nistelrooy, need to see him in a wider context, really. Loitering with intent. Round the back goes Keane! He scores, 
It's 4-1. They've risen to the challenge again. Yet again, they don't deal with the cross. I just wonder if he gets back on side. And that ball's played. It's borderline again. But great recovery from Roy Keane. Rescues that ball, makes it his. But I don't see why that isn't offside, I have to say. It's a good response, isn't it? The goal just made you wonder, City's goal that is, whether there was any possible way back. Surely now that has shut the door firmly in their faces. Well, we talked about the miracle, <laughs> offside or not, the miracle really is Ruud van Nistelrooy. Yeah. But it's got to be questionable. I mean, he's in there, the ball's gone over him in the first place. Distract, deceive. He's in there to score a goal. Mm. Everyone in a free kick was in the box is there to score a goal. But, uh, Paul Canadine, with all sorts of pieces of paper, I'm sure, to uh, read it and uh, briefings to attend. Keith Hackett, who is the man in charge of refereeing at the moment, is at the game today. All right, right, it is a fourth goal in a 4-1 scoreline, but with ten minutes left, City have just scored. It is an important moment in the match. It's a big important moment as well. Ruud van Nistelrooy hasn't gotten up in that last challenge. And if there's one player that Sir Alex Ferguson wouldn't want any damage to, it would be a star striker. Look, concern is there, you can see it. And it'll be a case of any doubt, get him off. I'm sure that was instructions. Well, of course, Sir Alex Ferguson has to decide after this game uh, which of his players will be fit enough to go off on international duty. <laughs> Van Nistelrooy, for the record, now has four goals in four Manchester derbies. Just landed awkwardly, didn't he? Fowler would do as well to keep facing the pitch. And this to Roy. Keen keeping going. Couldn't quite connect that. He's been great again, Manchester United skipper. He really just likes. doesn't lose Merseyside Darvis. He doesn't lose too many FA Cup games as well. Brilliant tackle, Giggs. It could be five, it could be a hat-trick, but Van Nistelrooy maybe not quite in full working order. Couldn't take it in towards goal, Ronaldo. <laughs> it's a very big slice on the left footer. That's so typically Roy Keane. This late in the game, 4-1 up, but did he give that ball up? You better believe he didn't. Just sat up for Van Nistelrooy, yeah, took a little bobble. Didn't help the control. And this went for a throw-in, would you believe that shot? <laughs> and there's Scholes getting in the face of Joey Barton. One relieved Manchester United player. One very successful Manchester United player again today. Well, he's got two goals today. And I think if you add up the distance from goal, or both of them, combined would be more than three yards. <laughs> it's always the best place to get a chance on, isn't it? <laughs> Barton. Rayner. But the feeling of Manchester City has been conceding too many goals. You look at the record, it's not a great one. And that's where they've got most of their problems. And they haven't, again, defended. Balls played into the box well enough. I know they've been difficult enough said at times, but sometimes they're almost impossible to deal with. But deal with them, you have to at times. And City haven't done. And four times they've conceded. Fortune.
Here's Reina. Done. Here's Barton. It's caught by Keane. The free kick within range for Manchester City. Here. Another chance for Tarnat to show the power in his left foot. Just five minutes left. Fowler takes a quick one and scores from it. Howard didn't see it coming quickly enough. Very uh, quick thinking by Robbie Fowler. Again, there's such a lot of confusion about where you're allowed a quick free kick or not. Robbie Fowler's obviously asked him, and he steps away. There you go. But that's no warning to the goalkeeper, I have to say. You've got a lot of sympathy. I know we say in the attacking side you'd always get the advantage, but you do feel for the goalkeeper in a situation like that. But he stepped away, Jeff went down. That's the signal to anyone watching that he's allowing a quick one. Well, it's another twist to the drama. It's not quite a sting in the tail. McManaman. Done. Good angle for a cross here. Sibieski is very good in the air. Not quite good enough or accurate enough. I tell you, it's not a bad header. I mean, Richard Dunn has had so much of the ball second half, and this time he does produce a quality cross. I think that's beaten Tim Howard, or otherwise he's confident it's going wide. Oh, he doesn't know the goalkeeper, does he? He's beaten. But it just tells you, Andy, the significance of that last yeah. third van this to Roy Gold and the question mark that will be raised about it. Well, that's, you know my feeling on it. If he doesn't get himself back on side. Well, it can't be another phase played. of play that quickly. It isn't another phase of play. It's a load of rubbish to talk about another phase of play. It doesn't exist. He's in the middle of the goal. He's, and if he, as long as he gets back on side before the ball's played, fine. But he didn't. So he must be offside. I just understand it. Oh, I think it was a mistake. <laughs> Here's uh, Bart Dista Fowler. Oh. He's, uh, frustrated uh, with everything at the moment, Robbie Fowler. I think if that was on his left side, he may have had a different result. But it just goes to show you said that. I mean, Manchester City have had enough opportunities in the second half to be even closer than 4-2. It's Ryan Giggs who gives way for Nicky Buck to come on and just try and uh, put out the remaining fire that Manchester City is showing here. And it might be the case as well that, as I said, Richard Dunn has an enormous amount of the ball on this right-hand side. He might have just told Nicky Buck, just go in there and just block it off in front of Quentin Fortune. In the last few minutes of this game. Reina. There's two more goals conceded by uh, Manchester United, but two goals conceded when they're down to ten men. Kevin Keegan's Old club, Liverpool, in action on the Sunday against Portsmouth. Again, fifth round of the FA Cup. You can see it live, Sky Sports 1. 30 years ago, Liverpool won the FA Cup and Kevin Keegan scored twice in that final against Newcastle. This time, Not doing uh, duty on the left, gone out. Phil Neville's got a problem. Sibieski, what a chance! Maybe not even from the header, but the support he's got here. If he, he's aware of it, I mean, he's Dicky Butt should do better there. But the ball in, 
It's a free header 12 yards. He had good support all around if he wants to know it down to anyone. But he took the header on. Well, not bad. Attempts at goal from Manchester City. Over half of them on target. Right, Phillips. Rayner. Similar to the flick from Keane. Which should pave the help pave the way to Manchester United's opening goal. But anyway, it'll do for Manchester United at the moment. See it out. Not going to work to Alex Ferguson's team. Two minutes of stoppage time, they've got to see it out. Sylvester. Get across the ground well, Joe, but to get his challenges in, we talk about closing down, but you've got to have the speed to be able to do it, not just the attitude. And Wes Brown is uh, coming on for Phil Neville in stoppage time. He goes off to a claim, unlike his brother earlier in the day. Well, of course, we're need West Brown. Gary Neville will get a three-game ban for violent conduct. You know, Ferdinand uh, telling us earlier in the day is still a few weeks away from uh, hearing the results of his appeal. And surely whatever happens won't allow him to start playing again straight away. So there are some uh, consequences of a difficult nature from this day, which has had so much positive in the end for Manchester United. Sibieski. Tim Howard has had uh, some terrific contributions. They talk about him maybe not looking such a good goalkeeper recently with the difficulties of those defending in front of him. He's looked a very good goalkeeper in the second half. Uh, the white save from Joey Barton. Could easily have been a pivotal one. 1-0, but they've got City level. At the time, they, were, they really were on top. But... Keane still buying Manchester United a bit more time, and they're only dealing in seconds now before the final whistle. Fowler, Sibieski. Fowler won't get it. Yes, he does, and Sibieski. It's it to Robbie Fowler, who can run it through, then Rainer's there. And Van Boyten. Sylvester scraping it away. They've won it. Red, the Valentine Day colour in Manchester. Two goals from Ruud van Nistelrooy as Manchester United got big with ten men. So Alec Ferguson gets his 50th FA Cup win in difficult circumstances against the club that he first saw Manchester United beat as their manager back in 1987. City's Old Trafford hurt goes on. Tim Howard made some vital saves after Gary Neville had been sent off for head-butting Steve McManaman before half-time. United 1-0 up then. Paul Scholes had celebrated his 400th Manchester United appearance. There are big rewards here. A place in the quarter-finals of the FA Cup for the first time for five years. An extension of the local bragging rights as well, though those will be up for grabs again next month when United make their first visit to the city of Manchester Stadium in the Premiership. Extraordinary game. Manchester United 4, Manchester City 2. A quicker. He's got a very, very good left foot. Skull's making a run, it's a long ball. And Boyton's header drops only for Giggs. Deflects off Dunn. Contact by Wright Phillips, just to buy Manchester City a moment or two to regroup. Now, he's not really been penned back in the opening 15 minutes.
Manchester City haven't been particularly fast out of the traps here. Reina. Nice footwork from Claudio Reina. It's a risky pass though. McManaman. It's just all a little scrappy at the moment, the game. Michael Tarnat has uh, also a point to make to Manchester United. He was in the Bayern Munich side in that Champions League final. League on a Solskjaer, will he be pleased not to be here? Directly reminded of what Solskjaer did that night in Where Barcelona. Is he? is he on the left or right of that picture? <laughs> 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 and this to Roy. Stay in for Giggs. Fortune's cross and Keane's header. It was a ball that was there to be attacked. Hit with some pace by Quinton Fortune. Well, he's better than that as well, Roy Keane. Very, very accomplished in the air, and it certainly wouldn't have phased him this ball coming in at that kind of pace. First time crosses on, it's just laid back pretty well. Not his best. One FA Cup goal for Manchester United, and it was 10 years ago. Done. Interception by Fortune. Phil Neville. Sibieski uh, working hard from the front. O'Shea. But I feel a bit sorry for Wes Brown. It's been out a long time. I'm expected to come in straight away and be uh, exactly as he was before all his injury difficulties. And it takes time, I'm afraid. Scott's. Might take time for Manchester United here. Ronaldo. Giggs gets ahead to it. And Skulls Barton jumped with an arm up. Might have made contact with the ball. Jeff Winter was well placed to see. Right Phillips. That's a credit behind Joey Barton. Really engaged their front players particularly well, City, to this point, but no, they haven't used the ball well. Duck. Now McManaman. And he's back in favour with Kevin Keegan, having spent a spell on the sidelines. He has been a, a winner here before, Steve McManaman, with Real Madrid. Well, the two big boys are going up, even from the free kick as far out as this. Both centre backs, not him, of course. He will be on player cam for the next 15, 15 minutes or so. He's a credible target. The Belgian. Time that takes. But you can imagine that. Uh, well, certainly since the, the Liverpool game, Manchester City have been focusing on this tie and focusing on the apparent Manchester United weaknesses that have uh, surfaced over the last three games. Eight goals conceded. Fortune. Skulls. Barton that uh, makes Giggs turn and run into trouble. In the shape of Reina. Getting it isn't a problem for Manchester City. Keeping it though, mm, it's a little harder at the moment. Harry Neville. Van this to Roy. Roy Keane. Important stop by Harrison. Well, he did it second half against Tottenham and he started again. 
the Manchester City goalkeeper, but Roy Keane, I think, knows that that is a glorious chance. It looks to side foot this one, and I thought he'd just put his foot through it and drill it with some power. He's so close to the goalkeeper. It's a good save, but United should be leading. Ronaldo. Well spotted by Van Boyton. McManaman. First real chance of the game. And I think might have let it uh, trouble his mind. Well, this uh, plan and platform put out by Kevin Keegan, it asks a lot of uh, Rayner McManaman. We know about Barton, he'll get his tackles in and work in the centre midfield, but he, he needs those allies either side of him, and they've run in behind uh, McManaman there. Gary Neville it was. I think one area there is a weakness, could be a weakness, is in the left-hand side. Michael Tarnock doesn't really have anyone in front of him. Any real support. Manchester United can switch it to Ronaldo quickly. He might get a bit of joy, 1v1 against Tarnock. chance there, Van Boyten, there's a little cameo of what this rivalry is all about, it's a free kick to Manchester United at the end of it, well, just dwelt on it Van Boyten, took a chance, tested his own ability to play his way out of trouble and almost paid for it but a free kick has been given, just past the halfway mark in the first half, Ronaldo's only Manchester United goal came from a free kicker, a little bit wider against Portsmouth. Found its way in. We've got a better angle for a, a direct approach from here. And there he goes. Good effort. You can tell the goalkeeper's worried. He's scrambling across goal. That is very, very close. Good whip, good pace. An almost perfect direction. Nearly got back. Well, Harrison understandably had an eye on the other post. It's goals. Just up to the little Manchester United in the last five minutes or so. Van Boyden. City, City, City haven't been allowed to start, have they? They haven't used the ball well, they've given it away too easily. Playing well enough to earn a goal, and now they've got it. Well, it's been coming, hasn't it? Maybe not with chances, but the pressure's been building and building, and yet again, you talked about them. Two goals in the league match. Look at that little turn round the corner from Keane, and he's been, I think, fantastic for Manchester United. But Reina's got a problem. Look, he wants to win it, but he almost pulls his foot away from it. Now, whether he does that because he's worried about the own goal, or whether he thinks the goalkeeper's going to get it, but you can see the leg came out, went back again. Uh, no surprise behind him that Paul goals calmly, coolly and effectively gives his side the lead. It's a local lad in the local derby. and it was a head of steam being built up by Manchester United and it's now not just hot air it's substantial they lead Manchester City by one goal to nil I mean it might sound daft I know but I think that might be the best thing that could happen to City because they really have been poor as an attacking force in this first 35 minutes and it's needed something to shake them out of that. The goal against is, is that. And I think at half time, if it stays like this or worse, it's just getting booked down for four or five offences. I saw Jeff Winter indicate there. But I think Kevin Keegan will have plenty to say to his team, as he probably did at Tottenham. He knows what to do and what to say, but 
They haven't been a patch in the first half, and they were that night. Phil Neville. And Van Nistelrooy is onside. And that pace that you talked about, Andy, that Richard Dunn certainly has, particularly for a big man. But, it all. but again, look at the sloppy play there from Manchester City at the back. They have the ball, possession of it. One pass is given it away, and he's almost through the middle of their defence. And this to Roy. Scholes. This thing just got to it. And Phillips looking for a bit of help. He gets it on the outside from Sibieski. Well, Manchester City better batten down the hatches a bit at the moment because Manchester United are looking to put this game beyond them as quickly as possible. United. And that is a push by Phil Neville. Now, here's a chance for the height that Manchester City have and to see how well Manchester United have been working on the training ground. Again, very short time since the Middlesbrough unhinged them on Wednesday here. And Tana is a, a good taker of a free kick for City. Harold plays his part. And Ronaldo very much on the run. Manchester City have been on the rack. Pressure by McManaman. Back to win the headers. A smashing ball by Philip Neville to Scholes. Giggs joining Van Nistelrooy in the middle. Ronaldo's there as well. Here comes Gary Neville. And Gary Neville beats the ground and uh, City go to him. Three, four players. Oh, and now Gary Neville has reacted. We and Jeff Winter. If Jeff Winter saw that, he's off. Surely he can't fail to have seen it. I think he's off. If he saw that, he's off. He hasn't finished yet. It's a major, major disciplinary issue here in the FA Cup. Kevin Keegan goes down to get his players out of it. First of all... Well, he's shown a yellow and then a red for Gary Neville. It wasn't straight red. The yellow for diving, I think, and the red for using the head, but that could have been a red in itself. Manchester United are down to ten men, and a player brought back, apparently for his composure for their defending, has lost the plot at a time when United were looking comfortably moving towards winning this cup tie. Well, it might not be finished. This is where book this is it. He really does dive there, there's no doubt that. And he incensed Manchester City player. Tarnock got involved, McManaman got involved, Joy Barton got involved. And there's a little nudge there. Saw it quite clearly, so did Jeff Winter. He has no option but to send Gary Neville off. He's now having a chat with the fourth official. There was all sorts going on, I'm sure that the referee didn't see. Now Tarnock has been booked, he, has so been he gets booked, another yes. yellow in the episode here. Joey Barton is involved as well. No, I don't know what's happening with him. Now, this is the player who got two yellow cards, of course, in the fourth round replay. Surely Barton's not going to go again. Well, from what we saw, from what we've just seen again in the replay, it was a little push in the chest. He gets yellow. Yeah, I thought that. Tom, that's the one that you'd be worried about for Manchester City because he definitely got involved in it. Yes, uh, being cynical, you'd say, well, book Joey Barton and uh, 
we'll take that caution as a team and get on with it because we're playing against 10 men. Yeah. Right. You can't argue with that, can you? I think what you can do is uh, take issue with Jeff Winter saying that the, the second one was yellow. But I don't know, maybe the, the red will be a straight red and the yellow, at, you know, if you like, three, three, three punishments. I think it will be. I think it was a straight red. I think yeah. he, he more than likely booked him for the dive. He was allowing play to go, Jeff Winter, and probably would have gone back and booked Gary Neville after the play came to a halt. It didn't, of course, naturally come to a halt, so he booked him for the dive, and then I'm convinced it was a straight red, but I guess Jeff Rees will be able to clear that up at half-time. Well, now the drama will unfold, because uh, this time it's Manchester City. Stars as ten men themselves, of course, at Tottenham, yeah. they have the supposed advantage. Well, a game that was just hardly what you would call a local derby. Sibieski. Well, a, a little slow in getting organised Manchester United here. A decent ball in, but it's just a bit far out for Sibieski. They've had to reshuffle. Phil Neville has got the right back. That's no problem for him there. And they just tucked Paul Scholes back in. Lee Van Nistelrooy, I guess, up top in his own. The support coming from midfield. But they want to get to half-time now, Sir Alex Ferguson, just so he can set things down, set all these players down. Because there wasn't a threat, they were absolutely dominant in this game. I know it's only 1-0, but they were never in any problems Sir Alex Ferguson's side. He must have thought, this is as comfortable a 1-0 as I can remember in a local derby. And then, well, losing the head, Gary Neville first with Kevin Keegan is more of a big game player. This is Gary Neville. Key. Ten Manchester derbies and no defeats. O'Shea. Sibieski, cutely done. And the legs of Phil Neville. Now a chance for Sean Wright Phillips to express himself against Quinton Fortune, who's really had to learn the left-back job this season. But there's someone who's played there before to help him out. In the shape of the versatile Phil Neville and this... A bit of space here for Keane. Giggs has come in from the left-hand side. Gary Neville's got Ronaldo outside him. He's looked for Van Nistelrooy instead. Still Van Nistelrooy. It's a bit of an international confrontation there. The Dutchman Van Nistelrooy, the Belgian Van Boyten. Van Boyten looking across to the linesman, who's very, very close to being offside. Fowler is offside. But he always plays in the shoulder, Ruud van der Sarre. He takes a chance and getting caught offside time and time again. As he's loitering uh, in, the, in the old days, would have been a straightforward offside position van der Sarre as this build-up goes on. A little bit of difference in the licence of the interpretation of the law now. As to uh, when the ball is played, does it get to van der Sarre then? Skulls intervened. The link up doesn't work out between Ronaldo and Scholes for Manchester United. Van Boyd. Tarnat. It was a German defender, Fronsek, who was a significant figure the last time the clubs met in the FA Cup, it's on this ground eight years ago, Fronsek gave away a penalty from which Eric Cantona equalised and Manchester United went on to win. And Boyden is on loan from Marseille, and he was Marseille's top scorer last season. Mostly headers from set pieces. Bit of uh, kicking the ball away from Gary Neville by Tarnat. He certainly can't be offside from a throw, that hasn't changed. And Van Nistelrooy looking to work that position. Hasn't quite settled. Put the 10 minutes. Understandable. Not only a big FA Cup tie, but local derby as well. So, and the two players just settling on both sides. Maybe he would trade all the drama of a cup run in for some league victories 
Well, Tarnat is definitely going to get uh, ticking off this time. Yeah, I mean, the ball's just bouncing and it has a little thrash, but doesn't really make much contact. What the knee is sufficient. Side for Philip Neville, but he's worked it wide to Giggs, and again, Richard Dunn right across. Yeah, they're as good as four at the back. Manchester City at the moment. Skulls. Fortune's cross. Just uh, gets ahead to it. Possibly kind of pass through to Harrison. But just uh, couldn't hear a call, that wouldn't be surprising given the decibel count inside Old Trafford. Ronaldo. Well, it does make it look theatrical and difficult then for referees to be absolutely 100% sure that there was a leg thrown out there. There's a little bit of justice maybe there because uh, McManaman, who was penalised in the original decision, was allowed to make an interception. And he didn't seem to make much contact with Cristiano Ronaldo. And here's Reyna, Sibieski, looking for foul. He's chased in behind Gary Neville. And bounces back off Robbie Fowler. to the fifth round of the FA Cup and the all Mancunian occasion. Neville, Keane. That's what Joey Barton does well. Oh, he's just pulled that without looking. Well, that's the problem. Sean Wright Phillips was actually back looking after Ryan Giggs and... Uh, that's the uh, dilemma for Manchester City. Well, I think City. they've changed Manchester City. I don't think there's a doubt about that. I think the thing that's influenced them is where Paul Scholes on the ball now is playing and who's, who isn't playing up top with Ruud van Nistelrooy. You play three centre-backs in there, there's no point. It's one too many. Well, it's a mistake by one of those three, Van Boyden. Ronaldo. For Gary Neville. Keane. And Scholes, they were strong in the centre there, Manchester City, that's not always been the case this season. Keen really couldn't get to, too far out of the way, didn't try to play pull back for a free kick for Barton. Cristiano Ronaldo, incidentally, is in the Portugal squad to face England next Wednesday. In the memories of England-Portugal, Steve McManaman, Euro 2000, that was his goal that made it 2-0 after Scholes had got the first in a match that England lost 3-2. And the manager is on the Manchester City bench. Yeah. Duck. And Ronaldo stretching away from Tarnat. McManaman trying to fill in. a thing or two about trickery himself, Steve McManaman, and Ronaldo didn't get the better of the Manchester City man. Decent responsibility as well. Fullback was left sprawling, filled in behind him pretty well, Steve McManaman. But neither, team, neither team's really clicked into gear in the attacking third yet. Good clip corner from Giggs, and... Uh, the team that have been conceding from corners come close to scoring from one with Ronaldo's header. That. I mean, I watched Ronaldo just walk in, stand at level with the near post, signal for the ball, and not get picked up. It's 
extraordinary lack of marking there. He played very well in the fourth round, Ronaldo, but it mm. was Northampton Town. Last Premiership opposition, of course, in uh, round three for Manchester United. And they were a goal down at Villa Park. Right, Phillips. Now Rayner. McManaman. Tana, Sibieski. Oh, a little touch might have uh, troubled Howard. Uh, I wouldn't stand off Tarn, Michael Tarn like that easily. I think Ronaldo's got to get closer. O'Shea. McManaman. Let's see where they want to start their attacks from primarily. But. Sean Wright Phillips has actually come infield. Now he's spun away. It was a bit late for Joey Barton. He had to go through the middle in the end unproductively. Manchester City prepared to just keep their shape. Make it difficult for Keane and company to find a pass. And Jeff Winter's given City a free kick. A little unlucky there, both the challenge of Van Boyten and Gary Neville's pretty similar. Not a lot between them, but he thought Gary Neville overstepped it a little. The problem for City really has been turning talented players into a tough competitive outfit. They showed an edge at Leicester, of course they did at Tottenham. Now those only successes since November the 1st. I think he can be over happy with the way his team has started, Kevin Keegan. Done. Outrun by Ryan Diggs, Scholes pulls away. That was a good race, wasn't it? We know that's a dunce quick. We know Ryan Giggs is quick, but Giggs was a little quicker. Ronaldo, I think we know, has a very deft touch. Pulled the ball in very easily. Keane. Scholes wants it to feet. Keane couldn't see the path to it. Phil Neville to Ronaldo. Chance to tease Tarn out again. Back for Gary Neville. Ryan Giggs back post and uh, well tracked by Sean Wright Phillips. Well, that's a danger with Tarmac because you look here at this stand. Because he's no protection, Mark, one of the full and one of the centre backs is dragged out. So it does leave a gap at that back post because Richard Dunn has to come in to mark people. Team going near post. Sylvester gets a touch fan. Mr. Roy, Ronaldo. Corner off McManaman. And not surprisingly, Manchester United the dominant force. Sibieski helping out. We're never looking for Roy Keane. He raised himself onto the ball at the expense of Dista. Oh, he's not lucky. He, get, he gets a possession, stands his ground here. Just that misjudges that totally. It's pretty emphatic possession. But City have done all right protecting the goalkeeper. Can only think of one save he's had to make, the one from Roy Keane. And we're almost half an hour into this game. So Kevin Keegan will be fairly happy with that aspect of his game, his team's game, but he will be very disappointed the way they've used the ball and how little they've actually been in this half of the pitch. Fortune. And Skulls came deep, Roy King went forward. And Gary Neville again, 
on the gallop and onside. Richard Dunn has the kept his nerve. I think Joey Barton just switches off here. He tracks Gary Neville so far and just stands. And Distan gets caught. Ball watching infield as well. It's a lovely ball in, but just lack of support. That's a fan of Brighton standing in the middle, playing them onside, playing Gary Neville onside in particular. Collection of corners for Manchester United. And Wright Phillips with a chance to run. Fortune charging back at it. Wright Phillips does well to keep it for City. It's been a problem for them so far in the game. And McManaman only keeps it in for Ronaldo. And suddenly Manchester United turn and threaten and have another corner. It's just an awful ball that brought them in problems. Steve McManaman probably would have been better let them go out of play. But they're not doing themselves any favour, City, for the use of the ball. Towards gigs at the near post. Not sure that was the plan. That's where it ended up from Ronaldo. He's on the ball again. Fowler having to come back and try and help uh, stem the flow. Keane turns. Marina there. McManaman there. Oh, that's a better passing. McManaman and Fowler on the same wavelength. Rayner has covered a lot of ground to back up the attack. Under challenge, felt he was fouled. Jeff Winter thought not. an hour gone. Fruitful in terms of possession for Manchester United, but not in terms of taking the lead. But McManaman. Trying to thread it through for Fowler, Sobieski likewise with the header. That's where they struggled in that area last time. As soon as they've got anywhere near that Manchester City, they've They've given it away, they haven't looked like they could find a way through. Haven't looked threatening, really. And they are without an Alka, well, of course, it's a nice huge goal. Mentioned that, 19 goals this season. I guess it would be a bit like Manchester United being without Ruud van Nistelrooy. Of course, they've got uh, more non-Analka games, because he's got the three-match ban coming mm. to that red card at Arsenal. Tarnett. Lovely ball. Mm. Good technique, and it's given Wright Phillips a chance to take on Fortune, but Sylvester across actually made it easy for him in the end, but it had been more challenging. He was in the right place. Key. And Mr. Roy might have used the upper arm. Played it as though he expected the whistle to go, but he obviously expected some movement from a teammate that wasn't there. I don't know what he thought. Well, very much outnumbered. It's a case of too many cooks for. United. Key. And Mr. Roy, the outside of the foot, is very prominent in this attack. Skull's going in. Well, they've been. For the 141st Manchester derby, it's the cup. We're interactive. Press your red button. The player cam is on a man who's played in five FA Cup finals already, Roy Keane. Here's Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Thanks, Ian. Playing his first FA Cup tie, City's new defender, Daniel Van Boyten, 1 metre 97 tall.
he maybe can exploit the uncertainty of Manchester United's defending in the air. Five of the last six goals conceded by Manchester United have been to headers. Well, no Premiership points for either side of Manchester on Wednesday. Not for the first time United have had problems with Middlesbrough. And his old uh, sidekick, Steve McLaren. Not for the first time Manchester City have lifted the hopes of their fans with a goal, only to let the opposition in for a winner a couple of minutes later. It's the nature of Manchester City. Important for Manchester United that Gary Neville's influence is back on display in their back line. It reads Gary Neville, O'Shea, Sylvester Fortune. And it's a problem caused, one suspects, Andy, by the absence of Rio Ferdinand. <laughs> saw Ali Gura Solskjaer there as well. He's not quite ready for a return, but not far away. <laughs> Jeff Winter in his last season. has never done the FA Cup final, but if he doesn't get it this year, this is not a bad consolation. Manchester United, the most successful club in the history of the FA Cup. Ten wins, but since their last in 1999, they've not got beyond this round. They were knocked out in it, on this ground, by Arsenal a year ago. It always never ceases to amaze me how the difference in atmosphere in this ground when you play a cup tie as opposed to a league match. The 9,000 fans, of course, makes a huge difference. Well, the flag went up, and uh, Jeff Winter, for a second, tried to give Manchester City an advantage, stopped the play, and uh, Sibieski a lot said about offside, of course, over the last... Uh, Ten days or so from an incident on this ground. A goal by Ruud van Nistelrooy that uh, triggered off a debate about the interpretation of the law. It'd be interesting to see if Manchester City gets some of their own Paul goals when he plays deep when he drops off the play. They've got the extra man in central midfield, and it might just be that Claudio Arena is asked to keep a little eye on scores when they don't have the ball, Manchester City. 3-1 the league game here in December and it's only a couple of weeks or so until uh, the return and Manchester United go to the city of Manchester Stadium for the first time well it will be the first time providing of course it's not a replay in this FA Cup confrontation Arnie Arison goalkeeper who came from nowhere into the uh, limelight at White Hart Lane, particularly in the second half. Here's Giggs. Plenty of recollections again in the local newspapers here about Ryan Giggs' time as a, a schoolboy with Manchester City until he was 14 when Sir Alec Ferguson made a legendary visit to the Giggs household and the rest, as they say, is history. Fortune. This time just waiting. Here's Rayner. It's a painful challenge on the American by Ruth Van Nistelrooy. Well, it wasn't a very good challenge at all. And had it not been the third minute of the match, we might well be seeing a yellow card with Van Nistelrooy. He's probably just get the benefit of the doubt from Jeff Winter because of the so early, but he comes in very late here. Strikers tackle, I suppose the best way to describe it. He's been watching Paul Scholes. <laughs> Here's Bart. Sean Wright Phillips was really the star, I think, in that recovery at Tottenham. Mm. They were a man light, he played as Sean Wright and Sean Phillips <laughs> to uh, make up that deficit and the turnaround will never be forgotten. It'll be 
Tottenham fans, maybe even Tottenham players watching today thinking, why aren't we at Old Trafford? How did it slip away? Fowler slips the ball away to Barton. McManaman with Merseyside connection with that trio. And ball. They've all got a little tight there, but they've got a little bit of luck in the handball. I always think in a situation like this early in the game, no matter how far out you are, this is worth working the goalkeeper. Just a little bit further out when Tana lofted that ball onto yeah. Distan's head for well, the vital first goal at Tottenham in the fourth round replay. And he's taking a big enough run up Tana. Sibieski closer. Sibieski takes the deflection on it and it will be a corner. Don't think it ever had the power to struggle the goalkeeper. So Tan had to take it. So we find out attention to detail, set plays. City undoubtedly have worked on them this week. Sylvester heads away from Manchester United, that's a, a better sign, backed by Reina, Sylvester goes again. The flag is up, as Fowler runs in behind Philip Neville, of course there's attention to detail for Manchester United as well. And defending is about detail, and putting theory into practice, concentration. Manchester United have lost that. Particularly set players. If you're losing goals from set players, Martin, and certain people are not doing their job 100%. And there were three at Goodison, which had done his old stomping ground. And, of course, Janino was allowed to sneak in at the near post to head the second Middlesbrough goal. He also headed the first, but I think he put that down to a set play. <laughs> Ball bounced back down off the crossbar. He could have put it in with pretty much any part of his body. Fortune. Well, Richard Dunn's almost been forced to play at right back. You know, we talked about the three centre backs being in play, and they are, but I think the concern in getting right Phillips high up the pitch is forcing Richard Dunn, whether it's deliberate or not, to go and attach himself a little closer to Ryan Giggs. Just that, gets a foot hit. Here's Gary Neville. Philip and Gary to play it to uh, John O'Shea. United don't get very far from that. McManaman reminded of his uh, Liverpool pass by some fairly tentative booing. Sibieski, maybe just been seen by 